going forward ooh talking about um amazing things that i've seen over the weekend um virgil abloh debuted his 421 uh, collection with louis vuitton for their menswear and it was quite possibly one of the best collections that he's ever done like hands down maybe up there with the first off-white collection that he did and remember that one where there was a uh, graffiti artist that was spraying some of the things on the clothes and shit it was just a moment in time that was right and maybe the one where ian connor ran down the the runway i was there actually when that happened like, that was my actually first passion paris fashion week show the one where ian connor sort of ran down the runway and sort of hand in hand with virgil but the in terms of energy in terms of production of show and in terms of just the quality of the clothes this is definitely his his pinnacle um um, of what he's trying to express and um a lot of it might come a lot of it might come to a surprise to some people because i know some people some people have kind of written him off as a designer i've already said my doubts and my frustrations with some of the stuff that he does but i think overall you have to give the guy a lot of credit for being able to number one bounce back from adversity and number two take some of the criticism constructive especially um that's pointed towards him use it and kind of use it in a very um in a very purposeful and not, let's say, and not performative way, right? He gets criticized for about certain things, whether it comes to Black Lives Matter stuff, whatever it may be, and he doesn't do anything performative. He doesn't just sign a check and keep it bouncing. He sets up an initiative. He kind of uh, props up and kind of promotes other black voices. He does all these kind of extra stuff that someone in his position probably shouldn't do, right? He shouldn't be answering or kind of listening to the crowd in that extent, but he's so sort of, I think that's his special power in terms of, maybe some of the other designers in his class like the demoners and other people kind of separate themselves from some of the other people uh, maybe let's forget the skill levels right just in terms of their ability to sort of like synthesize what's going on in the collective consciousness and kind of feed it through better clothes i think that's what his special actual power is and i think a lot of it comes via his obsession with kind of listening and reading all the comments and stuff right he's very sensitive to that sort of shit but again he's not cynical he doesn't go and start painting everybody as haters he just kind of uses it um as inspiration or as fuel to drive and inform some of his decisions and what you end up getting is great fashion moments and this is probably one of the best ones number one to start off with he did a, he put together a fashion film that i i actually watched from the beginning to the end most fashion films i kind of skip by or you know watch in the background or don't really pay much attention to but he actually legitimately made a fashion movie that I actually watched from start to the finish, starring Saul Williams, one of my favorite, um, I would say, creative forces within the quote-unquote black community, somebody who I think doesn't get a lot of credit that he deserves because he maybe is a little bit, flies under the radar, he might have a little bit more of a controversial and harsher tone as he speaks, he's not he's not as media trained as others, but he is he, he's definitely up there in terms of people that you should definitely be inspired by and take some sort of knowledge of. So let's play a little bit of the clip here. Um, his collection obviously is titled uh, Taurus v Purist, uh, I think a moniker that he kind of has um, uh, iterated a few times over the years but let's play a little bit of this fashion movie here so you can get a feel of just how amazing this whole thing was put that in full screen put it in place there you go take the sound <laughs> this opening poem by Saul Williams is so good man and again, in case you're watching via the podcast, it's Saul Williams um, walking through a snowy landscape, um, decked out head to toe in off, uh, sorry, in Louis Vuitton for in Louis Vuitton courtesy of Virgil Abloh, of course, looking amazing. white wilderness the construct of purity is sullied with every step the evidence I carry the hidden Sun in every breath my blackest self whose widest death is luxury I am no stranger anymore. The world is love to me. The snow will melt. The ice will thaw. And make it up to me. There you 
It's so good, man. It's so, so good. It's like a scene out of Westworld or something, man. This looks amazing. Let's fast forward a bit here. Take down the walls. Take down. So well done, man. And most deaf as well, rapping in it. Just sensationally done. The narrative. The casting as well is flipping sublime from front to back. Um, I think the, um, this might have to do something with the, the new stylist that he basically has in, uh, involved in Louis Vuitton menswear now. The guy called Ib Kamara, who's involved now with Days and Confused, I think I saw somewhere in the news. Um, he's definitely elevated Louis Vuitton to another level. This definitely goes to show how important the partnership and relationship is between a lead designer, lead creative, um, whatever it may be, and a superstar um, stylist. I forgot who the guy was, but there's this, um, uh, the, you, I think back to like Lotta and Demna in the early days of Vetman, the early days of Balenciaga. Part of the reason why that brand established itself or the brand established itself at the way it was was because those two were operating at such a high frequency in combination that they kind of elevated whatever clothes that they were making to a whole other level. Because I'm sure as a stylist, you don't just get the clothes on the day of the runway. You do definitely play a part in terms of informing some final decision in terms of cut selections finishing whatever it may be putting things together can just kind of elevate to a whole different level i think back to i forgot who the stylist was during mark jacobs's um uh time as well um but there's a lot of lot of kind of great partnerships that exist and this is definitely one of them that sort of lends credence to the fact that you need to have a great team around you to really elevate yourself because i've always been a big believer that um the great of uh, the the actual greatness of Virgil is a, of is obviously his ability to synthesize every all the information that he's sort of around him and the sort of all the kind of inputs that he's kind of getting as he's kind of traversing through his journey. But it's also um his ability to kind of ideate at such a high level, right? He puts out so much shit, right? Consistently. Collaborations, little projects uh he spoke about i think he did some stories about how he enjoys putting together just a staff tease he spends an absorbent amount of time putting together staff tees and all this sort of stuff right he does so much stuff from the dj and all this sort of shit right i think it's it's necessary especially when he's operating at the, at the high fashion level to have somebody that he can maybe offset some ideas with and bounce some stuff off of um because obviously in his position no one's going to say no to him but to have somebody else to kind of counteract some stuff and kind of you know bounce ideas off of steer each other in one direction pull each other back here and there um maybe let off the chains here and there i think that's very very important you've definitely seen the fruits of it going forward and as this partnership kind of grows and relationship gets more stronger and they start to know each other a bit more you're definitely going to see the best of virgil coming forth because i still think that's part of the reason why in my opinion his off-white collections are so patchy because there's not really that great stylist that kind of sits there that christian christine centera woman i'm not really the biggest fan of the stuff that she's done with off-white in terms of the styling stuff the stuff that she's done on that she's got a collection that she puts together this sort of like wardrobe um uh staple thing where you basically buy an entire collection of a wardrobe whether it's like an overcoat a suit uh a great tracksuit um you know a nice shirt she's got a really good there's a, she's got a really good taste level and eye there but for some reason she doesn't seem to be able to kind of take whatever um as fitted that she has with that brand and maybe somehow synthesize it in stuff that she's doing with off-white but anyway that was but that aside i just think she he basically needs another creative partner to kind of link up with him on off-white and you could you're definitely going to see the best of his work going forward if that continues <laughs> Unravel the mystery. So good. Make it up to me. Make space for me. And all the spaces in between. The boots, like this renegade cowboy look, all the hats. Uh, obviously the kilts are a big thing we're going to see a lot of that probably going forward in the new seasons I like the straps on the bags maybe they're going to be um, iterated out into belts I'm going to be a big fan of that if that happens again the cowboy boots loads of the skirts and kilts going forward there might be a little bit of a trend going forward with that I saw a video what video was it it might have been an ASAP Rocky video for the new um, for the ASAP mob tape or something right I saw on YouTube he was wearing a kilt um, without trousers underneath it so that might be a thing going forward in, in um, as terms of a trend that would be pretty sexy people will ideate it out a lot more see the interpretations of it going forward um obviously the baseball caps the sunglasses look epic it just looks so good all of it 
fast forward a little bit more. Train, Morrison, Joplin, the boys, Clark, Jacqueline, Chicago. So Williams smashed those it, man. Who burn, those to the flame, and the count is unnamed. So good. Silence is incredible. I love this bit. I, I don't know how. The, I don't know if this is um, edited. This bit where they kind of all rub up against each other, or if it's just, or if it's um, actually them doing it in real time. But let me see if I can fast forward it a bit. It's this bit here. Where is it? But it's yeah here. Where it's all like all cash. That looks so cool, man. They saw all like overlapping against uh, kind of really tightly next to each other. Uh, the choreography is amazing. Again, it might be choreography. It might just be something they've done kind of after an after effect on some sort of, you know, uh, editing software. But regardless, it looks flipping sick, man. So your back is broken. you going to need that leisure day. Like they're, like they're kind of repelling off each other like magnets. You know what I mean? So yeah, anyway, the collection's amazing. You know what you, you know the vibes. So let's go back to the actual uh slideshow, see, go quickly flick through some of the actual images themselves of the collection, and then we can move on to some Rick Owens. Um so yeah, so this is it obviously. You see on the screen up to 70 looks of quite a few, not as much as Vetima. They did 165, but still quite a few here. Loads of great stuff. The tailor, even the tailoring that I thought was probably one of Virgil's weakest things has sort of improved or looked better with maybe styling or maybe some tweaking here and there. It just looks much better. Maybe it's just an experience thing too. As you get used to your house and your atelier and the people that you're working with, your like they kind of interpret your language a little bit better. The relationships are to build, but it just looks sensational. Someone on Twitter mentioned that it looks, um, it's giving them very Parisian vibes, like, you know, um, sort of like the, I guess the West African, Congolese sort of style of, of dressing and I can definitely see that a lot of my kind of quasi uncles would definitely be rocking a lot of this stuff maybe more Yoji Yamamoto style but definitely rocking it I love this kilt thing man I, this is definitely something that I'd love to kind of incorporate in my looks going forward I, I've already had I've already worn like the kind of Rick Owens skirt short look thing and that's been a pretty liberating experience to have like a little skirt short look thing going on but to kind of evolve that and wear a straight up kilt is going to be a bit of a game changer but I love it nonetheless and again, just really, really, really good. Like I thought this guy looked a bit like Bad Bunny, innit? Really, really amazing, innit? You've got the sort of Michael Jackson S jacket here. Uh see through. Look at this. All this stuff looks so good, man. The bags, the suiting. Uh, the, obviously this 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 jacket is a sensational right these are all like these amazing landmarks i guess stuff that's to do with new york i'm assuming um uh buildings or whatever or maybe all across the united states maybe a maybe a sort of like um an ode to uh virgil's you know uh american roots and then there's another one that's mostly paris so the kind of the american paris collect uh, connection really looks amazing again i can't wait until um Walter Van Beerdick decides to come out and pop his head out of the parapet and basically accuse Virgil of stealing his idea because he decided to stuff some things and attach them to, to jackets. Amazing. <laughs> um, again, great color choices and combinations. I love everything about this. Really, really well done. Like that look is so good, man. There's a good. There's a look here which I thought was very much up bloody Oris's um is lane. That guy that wears all the all the mad clothes, right? Look, that's definitely something you would imagine bloody Orisis to wear, right? Like the, from the glasses to the hat to the biker jacket and trousers and boots. That is definitely him all over. Um, again, great stuff. Uh, the the modeling, uh, sorry, the, the casting is just great. Look at that jacket. And then this is my favorite one, right? These are like all the landmarks, I guess, and monuments in Paris, mostly, it looks like. Um, I thought at first it was landmarks around the world, but still, I love this idea of this kind of global traveler, right? This kind of ode to uh, days gone by, but also maybe something quite hopeful that we're going to one day soon go out there again. And, and these landmarks, the significance of these landmarks are going to be... Um, kind of um reiterated to us in some respect right you can take them for granted right don't we? we take these sort of tourist landscapes landmarks for granted we don't necessarily go and check them out and spend an evening or an afternoon taking pictures or sitting underneath them or just staring at them aimlessly but i think now that we've been kind of reduced to staying indoors and staying in our crap apartments especially on my regard i just want to go out there and see these kind of nonsense buildings right the house of commons uh the bloody big ben uh london bridge the millennium you know the london eye 
all these things are really have kind of the the significance is sort of heightened obviously during this time that we've kind of been away from them and i think this is a very 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 well done um jacket all in all a definitely great ode um to louis vuitton uh, to louis vuitton and to paris specifically oh and he's got oh it's got the harness it's got the the padded harness too which is a definitely a great elevation there but i think in general look at the tailoring man it just looks it looks far better than before the stuff just sits nicer on the body obviously he prefers this sort of like stacked bunched bottom here that i'm a big fan of slightly flared too. the boots the cowboy boots you don't even have to say anything about them they look sensational the bags look great too but i think the tailoring has really really up the levels man it looks really really good so many great looks and i'd wear so much of this stuff it just all looks sensational again look at that that's a cozy look man cozy look so so good um x off that one and then you can go back quickly to the review here what they had to say about this the review here courtesy of sarah moa she says the following that the death we scroll down can you let me scroll down yes there we go it says here um there are no accidents of timing in history and culture whether or not you had prior insight into how yesterday's inauguration of president joe biden was planned virgil Abloh's launch of his virgin of his uh, louis vuitton collection today also resounded with the poetry and intellectual powers of black consciousness taking its rightful place his sixth collection named ebonics came with a film directed by josh johnson um, that was powerfully and centered on a spoken word performance and a call to radical thinking through the lens of menswear and again usually all this sort of like wafty hedonistic stuff that virgil kind of um in beauty's collection with can get a bit lost on me but i think now with the time that we're living in and just as the significance of his position has been kind of i don't know it's sort of like it's a reminder of how revolutionary it is to have somebody of his background in a position that he's in speaking to the people that he's speaking to and putting that work at this level and just the pressures that kind of exist on top of him more so than your again i don't like to get in a race thing but there just is a difference in it in terms of the responsibility that he has in terms of what he's doing with his collection like louis vuitton it just he just needs to do so much more than just kind of indulge himself it's sort of like he needs to do this for it's sort of like he needs to put a lasting legacy down in the ground for black creators you know from now until you know the end of time which is a real heavy burden to have on your shoulders especially with the scrutiny that comes at him season in season out with plagiarism all this sort of stuff um and and then to put out to pull out this out of the hat after everything that's gone on last year with all the donation stuff is just sensational i think going forward um it continues that amongst the words delivered by saul williams and kai Isaiah jamal were these deconstruct the narrative make spaces take down the walls unravel the mysteries make it up to me as black people as trans people as marginalized people the world is here for our taking and it's for it, to, it for it takes so much from us that line really stuck for me read it again as black people as trans people as marginalized people the world is here for our taking for it takes so much for us and i guess that is what i like about this sort of message um a little bit radical but i like the idea of taking the thing and not actually waiting for handouts not waiting for a position to be created for you but going out there and doing the work putting it out on your own dime because this is the time isn't it we're living lockdown you have all the time in the world to do your creative projects to put out your little brand to put out a little collection to put out little ideas and concepts of stuff that you're kind of thinking about and just sort of put it out into the ether and hope that signal gets boosted or connected with somebody that you can kind of connect with who you can then build a community with and go on from there um was well, said um ablo was mustered an educational encyclopedia of answers to the uh, to the intellectual questions that have been troubling all designers over the point of fashion um the shows of making clothes in the face of black lives matter movement and of all the crisis that blew up in humanity's face last year he says we're still reeling he said um we sat through so many heavy conversations in 2020 so some so heated that things can't be discussed anymore but fashion can do this shows can do this and i like again i, I i'm not really I'm sure I really agree with the whole idea that fashion could change the world, but I do like the idea of using your platform to say something meaningful and to put out meaningful work that's going to resonate with people in a way that can add to the conversation. I don't think it's going to actually change anything on it in its own. I think sometimes it can fashion can be a little bit um, slap can be a little bit patched. Uh, I don't know, corny in their approach to kind of addressing political and societal issues. I think fashion sometimes is best left. What fashion political statements are best left said 
are best left unsaid. They sort of kind of are uh, intrinsic and kind of imbued in the clothes. I think of somebody like a Phoebe Philo. She kind of always laces little hidden messages in her stuff with that Celine that you kind of look back on and think, oh yeah, cool. I get what she was saying there without actually saying anything too overt. Um, I'm a big fan of that. It continues. Um, there's a lot to unpack, but the Louis Vuitton baggage, some of it in the shape of carrier bags, potato, sack, potato sacks, and an LV capo um, in the form of a plane to a symbolic um, reconfiguration of the masculine archetypes to the challenges of the ownership of the sources that Abla built in chaos. It's interesting they keep talking about masculine, right? It's archetypes, because there's a lot of that masculine archetypes in the Rick Owens collection I'm going to feature next, where they talk about male aggression. But it continues. Um, he says, there are a lot of stories mixing cultures. Um, there are a lot of stories mixing cultures. And from that, a new language will be created. Cool, considered cheek and flowing with floor length coats and sassy, um, so an easy tailoring. African draped wraps, kilts and Western hats styled by the deft hand of Ibrahim Kamara. It plainly makes this Abla best collection from the house since he arrived in 2018 100% agree I guess the first collection was just such a moment and how he did it with the whole kaleidoscope thing the moment with with um, Kanye crying Kikadi walking um Playboy Carty walking the show that was a moment in time right but I think this in terms of what he's basically been put on this earth to do I think this is definitely the antithesis of it, in my opinion. And I can't wait to see how this kind of evolves and goes on. It says here, and he's most autobiographical yet, yeah, the exploration of his African heritage and what it means to be a pinnacle of career in Europe as a black American creative director. He says, when I grew up, my father wore kente cloth with his nothing underneath to family weddings, funerals, and graduations. When he went to an American wedding, he wore a suit. I merged these two together, celebrating my Ghanaian culture. Add the LV patterns to the cloth, draped it with the pair, and compare it again with the tartan checks, and the result is indeed something new so so too the diagonal green and white print on the leather motocross suit uh my memory of the wax uh, print fabric my mum had around the house when i was growing up she was the one who taught me how to sew she learned it with uh from her tailor in ghana um again loads of stuff let's go to the bottom here it says here um da, da, da. it dovetails into the art high sub narrative of the film the poetic powerful multidisciplinary multidisciplinary piece made entirely by the diverse crew of talent Ablo has brought to work with him at Vuitton its theme shot between a gallery like space and a Swiss mountains is based on J James Baldwin's 1953 essay a stranger in the village um the writer's reflection on how it felt to be looked at in the midst of white culture as a black American artist in Switzerland so that's amazing imagine the budget in Louis Vuitton that he could film uh he could film a fashion film in the mountains of switzerland based off a poem written by james Baldwin in the 1950s talking about his experience being a black intellectual in switzerland the budget the budget goes crazy at louis vuitton it continues it's beautiful the clothes are great and they will doubtless um trigger even more fandom for ablo's louis, for ablo's louis vuitton menswear even amidst the pandemic as for the stepping up to make a bigger statement with fashion and its critically sensitive moment of change he says i have a responsibility we said we want diversity didn't we we say that in 2020 making change means making these changes i don't want to look back and say i turned a blind eye but you know he concludes i'm an optimist the future is yet to be decided and again that's one thing you cannot deny about the guy he goes out of his way to put people on platforms he provides them with a space and an opportunity to amplify their voice to express their creative talent again and again and again some stuff he might do might be a bit clunky some stuff might come across a little bit corny some stuff might come across a little bit plagiarized but regardless his ability to consistently put other people on is unparalleled it definitely especially in his position most people just kind of run through the door and don't turn back he's legitimately holding the door and making sure everybody gets in it's definitely something to be heralded and again like i said this is easily easily his best collection to date virgil abloh for louis vuitton for winter 2021 check it out it's great